Roland GS24 motherboard. For your orientation purposes, we'll be working right here on the board. This is where the USB-B port is normally located. And I normally wouldn't uh, bother recording a USB-B port replacement because it's pretty straightforward soldering. But we have an interesting conundrum with this one. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. They're running a contest. More about that in a minute. Every signal line for this port has been ripped off the board and all the pads, both sides of the board. It does present a little bit of an interesting challenge. I think what my approach is gonna be is to run jumpers, but soldering them to the pins or something like that before we put the port on the board is not really approach I like. So what we're probably going to end up doing is running the jumpers. We'll secure them on this side of the board and feed them through the holes. We'll place the port and then we'll probably end up having to do like almost a wire wrap method around the pins and soldering them on that way. Luckily they did not tear the anchor pads off the board so we will be able to secure it reasonably well through them. So yeah, that's our fun for today. And I think the jumper idea will work for most of these lines. These two bigger lines, or at least these two. These two bigger lines could be interesting. And we may try something interesting with those. We pretty much have them up to here. What we could do is maybe if we can cut out a piece of copper tape big enough but that will not overlap with one another. That's gonna be the biggest concern. We may just have to side it on one side of each of the holes. We may be able to just poke the legs through those once they're soldered on and secured. And that would probably work for these two lines. And then we can just feed the wire through on these two and work, do the wire wrap method on them. We will see if that is possible. We may try it. We may end up having to use wire on these two. I'm a little worried about the gauge of wire I would need to use because these are larger lines. But uh, yeah, we'll try a couple things and see if we can make it work. Grab our grinding pin. See if we can get ourselves a little spot and break off the rest of this trace. So there's a line here. Plenty of runway on that. There's almost enough here to work with, but we'll give ourselves some extra space to play. Oh, that just popped right off. That was excellent. That'll work. Now I'm going to need to set up my equipment. These are my expected temperatures for this job. These temperatures are brought to you by the associate links in the description. If you go to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. And I greatly appreciate you and won't cost you an extra dime. Let's add some flux to the subject. Way more than I needed, but hey. Add some solder to our tip. Try to avoid any plastic connectors. Proving to be more of a challenge than I thought. The avoiding of plastic connectors, I mean. Okay, let's bring in some indirect lighting so we can see what we're doing. For these small ones, I'm just gonna use some non-enamel wire. They're not gonna be crossing over anything that I'm worried about. I'm gonna route it a little bit just to keep it more of a distance away from the other wire. As I said, this is not enameled, so just take some care with it. I'm go ahead and feed it through the hole. And gently pull it through. As long as we don't break it, that should work. No guarantees on the no breakage though. Next wire. Through. We can by hand. Okay. And see it on the other side. We can pull it gently. 
Now for the interesting ones. PCBWay is running their sixth project design contest. Head to PCBWay.com and click on the banner. Check out some of the past innovations. This is your timeline. Your themes are electronic or mechanical. You'll be competing for a variety of cash and or prizes. Click on my link in the description and enter your project today. Question is, can I make pads small enough for these that will still work? Before anybody screams about lugs, there are no lugs with pads this size. At least not in my collection. Why? We're attempting to make our own. By attempting, I mean just attempting. We're not stuck on this method. I need to ha make sure that I have room to have another one. This may or may not work. So we'll push it as far up as we can. Still covering as much of the hole as we can. Of course, we still have to hope that we can get the pin through the copper tape. I'd like to think that would be possible. Trim it down a little. Oops, we do not want to be messing with that. Post in the comments, what do you think? Is this going to work? Or is this going to be an epic fail? Okay, that's pretty well where I want it. We're going to need to clean this off so that we can UV mask these pads and these wires down. I don't want them moving at all on this side of the board. Ideally, we'll have to be careful not to break the wire. I will be deploying the ultrasonic toothbrush because we need it to get under those new copper pads and get as much of that flux as we can out from under them. The ultrasonic brush is very good for that. If you cure the UV mask over something that is unstable and will move, the UV solder mask will be unstable and crack and move. Now looking at this, they're fairly close together but they're not any more close together than they would be honestly if you had the pad still there so i think we'll be okay i will be applying uv solder mask around these so they will be separated a little more than they are now hopefully that will protect us from getting like a bridge over on the uh, pins ideally let's apply some uv solder mask we don't care about pretty here care about secure Stuff's been sitting in the tray for a while, so it's getting a little bit chunky, but it's still usable. I'm going to put all around these copper pads and lend some security to them, other than just the solder joint. I'm not using hot air here, so I'm not worried about them floating off. I just want them to be as secure down as possible. This could come back to haunt us if we need to go with wire on these two pads, so let's hope. We may be able to start these pads with like a straight pin and create some small holes that hopefully the pins can more easily get through. We'll worry about that once we're secured down. We're going to place the big lamp on there and walk away for about 10-15 minutes, let it cure, and we'll come back when we're ready to continue our work. I hope you're getting value out of this video. If you find this something you're not ready to tackle just yet, just a reminder, I do offer these services both local and mail-in. Just head over to micromage.repair, click free quote, fill out the form, and I'll get back to you personally. If you mention this video, I'll give you a 10% discount on this repair. Okay, I do believe we are well cured at this point. Rock solid. Now we're going to try something that might ruin the whole thing. We're going to attempt to poke some holes in our new pads. so that we don't have to violently do that with a port. That went smoother than I thought, but we're not making any assumptions here. Okay, I think we are prepared to put the port on. We need to do so carefully. We really don't want to break these wires. So look, see. We did not clip or break our wires. Still on there. 
Now, wrapping these is going to be a bit of a challenge. We don't have a lot to work with on these pins. Grab our uneasy tweezers again. Let's see if we can get one or at least one or two wraps on these legs. Maybe we'll get more than that. So we don't break the wire. I'm surprised how many rats we're getting on this. That's pretty cool. I'm not going to worry about cutting it off at this point. I want to get soldered down first. Probably going to be enough. Move it on out of the way here. And we'll work on the next one. I'm hoping the new pads on the other two wires will lend some security to the port, ideally. Okay, we have more leg to work with than we thought. That's excellent. Okay, let's just move that out of the way. That should be enough. Grab some folks. Switch on our fume extractor. Some solder to our tip. We're gonna have some to feed. Put as much on as we can. I'm gonna have to come at this one with a little different angle. I don't wanna accidentally bridge. Don't think the big ball of solder on the tip is assisting us in this particular case. There we go. Should now be safe to break off the wire. Next two legs. See if we can get some solder to float up on those. This is where it may come to bite us. I don't know if this is gonna work at all, actually. It may have been better to run wire on those. That would be very disappointing. I think we can even see to see if those... Oh, wait a minute. It looks like we did get solder up on them. I'm sure that's the right sides. Yes. Wish I could see that other one. Don't see any solder on the other one. So let's keep working it. So we've got plenty on the front. It did feed through. Let's make sure we got plenty on the back. I really wish I could get an angle where I can see that back one. He saw her, but I can barely see it. If I had this to do again, I probably would not do it this way. We got solder there. Did our pad move? They should be making contact. So I am not going to be able to give you all a very good shot of this probing. We're making contact on the two wires. Being blind is a problem. There it is. Okay. So we are making connection. I'm hoping we're not bridging a connection. Let's go ahead and solder our anchors. Clean the board, pull out the rapid clean. Okay, using one of my old power squids. We set the milliamp rating to like 300 milliamps. I don't think we'll fry anything with that as something short. This old squid has a uh, female USV. And what I want to see here is just make sure that nothing is like shorted. So we'll plug it in. Turn it on, and we have no shortage amperage draw at all. That's excellent. Okay, final verdict. I do believe we were successful in getting the port back on and everything connected. If I had it to do again, I would probably modify that a little bit. I like the idea of the pads, but not having wire fed through to the other side that we could wrap around the pins kind of left some, uh, too much to the imagination, I'm afraid. 
So next time something like this happens, I might still do the pad technique, but I'll probably run wire to just to make sure that we're going to get that connection for sure. But other than that, I think it went pretty well. If you got value out of this video, I think you'll get value out of this one. And I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.